I think that should be like the main goal of, of a manager that is fair and really interested in you as an artist, which is rare. <laughs> Dub to the feelings I'm losing all control Hey guys, welcome to the studio. I hope you're having a fantastic day. For me, it's now 6.30 in the morning. I have so much business stuff today in front of me that I came here as early as possible. And as you might remember, like two days ago, I told you that I have someone that asked me to become part of their booking agency. They want to take care of my bookings, getting them, doing all of the traveling if necessary, all the negotiations, which is really fantastic because I really hate doing it myself. It's always best to have someone to do it for you because if you do it and you negotiate really hard everyone hates you and then you go that night to the gig and everyone already dislikes you although they don't even know you and if something goes wrong you have to be again the bad guy so it's better just to have someone else taking care of these kind of things. This huge contract arrived just yesterday I have to read it sign it hopefully and they also asked me to do a tech writer if you don't know what a tech writer is every musician basically needs it that is performing it states whatever you need to perform so let's say you're a band you might need a drum set so on your tech writer is a drum set and the venue the booker the club owner whoever booked you is responsible checking this making sure it's available so having a tech writer is important mine is extremely simple i made one already a couple of years ago my tech writer just says john sign tech writer on it are like two cdjs like the pioneer ones 2000 2000 nexus and the 900 djm mixer a monitor booth to be controlled so that i can actually mix i need to hear it in one ear on my headphones the other ear needs to hear like the monitors that are for me and controllable separately. And it also states that someone should get me to the venue and also pick me up, someone that is sober, a safe driver, or money for a cab. And that's basically already it. If you do live setups, you might need more equipment, but for a DJ, that's basically it. But as you know, there are some superstar DJs that have like really ridiculous things on their tag rider. We will get into it, but first I need to work prepare the promotional stuff for my upcoming release we run in as you know this track that i've been recording like months ago with gavin here in the studio like the first part and this like the repetitive very yeah the, the hooky bit like breathe it in let it go feel the high feel it all it's finally done it's finally ready for release will finally be available on friday by the time this video is out if you wait i think like six hours depending on where you live you can already listen to the song the second it's out i will put the link down below in the description just click on it check it out let me know how you like it but now business stuff working on music the usual stuff turn it up turn it up feel the high feel it now More than 12 hours later, it's like almost 9, I should actually go home, have dinner with my girlfriend, but I'm still sitting here working on the Not Scared track, you might already forgot about it. I had vocals on top of it, I wasn't really sure about the vocals, I really loved like the chorus part. <laughs> I really love it, but the rest of the track, the rest of the vocals never really fitted to the instrumental and the pronunciation wasn't the best, the lyrics not the best. So I delayed this entire project. I now found a new singer and songwriter. She will take care of it. In the meantime, I'm also trying to get the instrumental to, to the new level because you always learn so you always have to adapt. And if I have a project laying around for half a year, it feels like a long period. So I go back into it and just change it. That's one of the beautiful things working inside of the computer. You can change everything whenever you want. And I also started working on, on the secret edit that I was talking about. Still not sure if I will release it. Let me give you like a small, very, very small preview of it. 
very rough and that's the only part I can play to because there are no vocals of the original in it. It's a huge track that was just very recently released. And I think it's the most perfect song of 2017 to make an edit of. So I hope I will get something ready for you to listen to within the next four or five days. And despite working on these two songs, I also went through this entire contract. Yeah, and... It's not fair, it's not good, there's a lot of bullshit in it. Believe me, out of my experience, before you sign a contract you have to have an extremely good feeling and if it feels just like a tiny bit fishy, then it is probably extremely bad for you, don't sign it. Always let your lawyer check it twice, three times, maybe even get two lawyers to read it, maybe your parents, maybe maybe someone else in your family that knows the law a little. Yourself, of course, a couple of times mark spots that you don't understand or you think are unfair and also ask Ask the person that sends you the contract what actually is happening there and if you don't understand something ask them. By their reaction you can also tell a little more if it's a fair contract or if they're just trying to rip you off. And from speaking with those booking agents on the phone I was thinking it's something super fair and I was really into it. They also have some huge artists signed to them. I hope they have other contracts than this one because this was just, just a rip off. The booking contract is actually pretty simple. It shouldn't be for a year or two or three like a management contract. There shouldn't be any sunset clauses. That means when you cancel the contract that it's then really fully canceled and they don't get money even although they're not working for you, which is definitely the case in a management contract, which makes sense because the management is helping you building you up so they should also get something whenever you cancel the contract. A booking agent on the other hand isn't that responsible for your career. They just nowadays wait for someone to request you to play somewhere. They negotiate the price, they do all the flights, your tech rider making sure you get there safe and making sure you get the money at the end. And they take 20% but not from you as an artist. This was one of the points in this contract. They take 20% from the person that is booking you. So the club so the club pays you as a DJ and on top of that 20% for the booking agency. Some agencies take a little part of your money if they get you proactively that gig and that's kind of okay you can do that but it's actually also not the way it should be nowadays most booking agencies are just signing as many artists as they can they wait that they develop and that they kind of gain bookings by themselves and then they just administrate the, the bookings and that's it. Only a very few actually do this proactively trying to find gigs for you. Sometimes they have a big artist and book you always with the artist or they say the the club owner okay you can get this big guy for a little discount but you also have to book the small guy. That's that's also cool if they do that for you, but not a lot of booking agencies do that actually. So I think as always, the right thing here is actually to just do it myself. Whenever someone wants to book me, they can just write me. I will write them back and, and try to do it myself as long as I can, because at the moment it's not like I'm DJing every weekend. And I don't need again a contract that will hold me back as the management contract, which was by far the biggest mistake in my entire life and I was so looking forward to it but it turned out to be really really bad because those people didn't have the best intentions for me they were just thinking about themselves about their own money and not really developing me as an artist and I think that should be like the main goal of, of a manager that is fair and really interested in you as an artist which is rare but I'd love to find someone like this that can actually really work with me together. But let me know what you think about booking agencies and managements. Do you think they're necessary or you as an artist and me as an artist should do everything by themselves as long as possible? I think that's the way to go and with the internet the world is anyway such a small place you can contact anyone anytime immediately so you don't have to have so much people around you. And I think whenever I get to the point where I can't handle it and I'm pretty close to it, I might just employ someone this way. Someone gets a job, gets money, I have way less work and I have more control over this person and I don't have to, to give out shares to people that don't do actually anything. But yeah, I would be really interested in your opinion. 
Also, I now know what to do to give away this keyboard. It will be a worst track submit coming up right after my We Run and release, which is coming up on Friday. After that, I have plenty of time to record a couple of weird samples for you, give them for you as a free download, of course, and you have like 24 or 48 hours time to try and make a track in 10 minutes, but all of the rules and everything coming up in one of the upcoming episodes. And now it's really time to go. I'm already expecting like a phone. Oh yes, I got a couple of phone calls. So <laughs> let's hurry up. I don't know, this contract kind of makes me angry, but that's just the way it is. You just have to continue, keep on doing your stuff no matter what happens, no matter how dark it already is. Man, and that's one of the main things I hate about winter. It's so late, so cold. I have to take one of these cars to get back home safe and fast. More fast and safe, definitely. So don't forget to like, subscribe, we'll see us tomorrow again with another interesting vlog, then coming up the making of of the We Run On track, and then coming up the worst track submit around the weekend. This will be fun, so don't miss it. Sign out. I mean, I, I just love these smarts. You always find a parking spot, and they're kind of cool. I don't know. Wouldn't drive one of them in the US, though, because there's everything so big.